We are back. Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network, Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We haven't had the chance to talk to our next guest in a while, and it's good to have him with us today. What a better day to have him than the one and only Ricky Vitalico, NBC Sports. Slick Rick. Wait, wait. He, he graced us with his presence? Uh, whoa, whoa. Well, whoa, it's like what? that. We've oh, been, okay. I've been trying to check this man down since January. Oh, Rick, come Gunner, on, Gunner's now. been Gunner's been firing all day today. Yeah, Rick. hey, Ricky, just, just these get two, ready, man. Ricky, these two, I've been trying to be nice to them, dude. They brought out the worst of me today. I apologize right now, but <laughs> it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly today, Rick. I'm sorry. Why, why are they being so mean, Gunner? You know because that's who they are. They portray oh, themselves as these no, very, no, very no, popping type individuals. But then they attack D Gun. And D Gun was just trying to be a happier person, living in a happier place in his life. They won't let oh, Rick. When you get out. They bring you back in. That's the problem. <laughs> Just like fishing. Yeah, I'm playing the world's smallest violin right now. Unbelievable. Oh, hey, Barrett's, the only, Barrett's the only one with his own show here. That's a good point. That that's is a good point. That is true. Yes. Uh, wow. So I thought this was cool, Rick. I'll get your reaction to this one first. Yep. I think a great choice by the Phillies. Utley and Rollins throwing out the first pitch tonight, man. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty awesome. I think they did a nice job last night with all the champions out there. I thought that was great. Obviously, Chase and Jimmy. I mean, you knew they were going to throw it out at some point. Uh, I think it's good timing. I'm. I'm did, did they release who's going to do Game Five? If that's a possible clincher? No, I don't think. No. I, I would. How about Lynch and Chooch? How cool would that be? That would be perfect because right. that's what you. I mean, obviously, the last out of the 2008. I mean, that would be outstanding. I, hey, that's a good choice, Rob. Maybe you should. Uh, you know, talk to the Phillies. I'll call up our guys. I'll call up our people over there. I'll get involved and we'll get them all. Rick, I mean, I there were a lot of, man, there were a lot of, uh, I guess, stars there last night. There were. Tim McGraw, you see what Tim man. McGraw did? That was That was so cool. It, when Kate, he turned Kate around Upton. and pointed to, to Tucker's yeah. old number, man. Kate Upton really. did see her close up. Yeah. She is not ugly. Whoa. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. The the sweater was <gasps> fitting quite well last night. I'll just leave it at that. That's all. That's all. Look, Kate what do you, what do you mean yes. by that? What do you mean? Uh, she she the, very nice. Did oh, she man. have the purple shoulder shoulderless? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Nice. yep. I think we're on the same the page. Pose, yeah. She's the posing. I didn't, I didn't see any of that stuff you guys are talking about. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, you know? Of course Me you either. didn't, Gunner. <laughs> uh, I Rick, like I like where I live, Ricky. Just, yeah, he, just, he'll just be kicked out of his home studio very quickly, Rick, if he keeps that up. Uh, he needs a glass of milk is what he needs. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, I got I, Before we go to get the last thing, everything, I, just give me your sense, your vibe as a pitcher, just your your intuitive sense of what, what you're thinking about Nola tonight. Is there any – do you have any kind of idea what we're going to get here? Oh, if, if I were to say yes, I'd be out of my mind. I, I just think, you know what, when was the last time, and, and this is an easy way to live, when was the last time you saw Aaron Nola have three bad starts in a row? Right. The answer is you haven't. Right. So I guess the odds are with him, but, I mean, what concerns me the most, it has been a long season. We're seeing what's happening to Wheeler right now. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be some cause for concern. Um I, I think it's good that you look at last night. They didn't use any of the, the high leverage guys out of the bullpen. That's a positive for the Phillies. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if you could short – if he goes five innings, six innings, gives you two two runs or less, I think that's a win for the Phillies. And the, the bullpen should be able to take care of that considering who you have there and how fresh they are. Um, but Aaron, I mean, I think it's very simple. He's got to stay on top of everything. When he starts floating the baseball, which means getting on the side of the baseball – and like with his curveball kind of casting it, it just kind of floats in. Um, that's when he's going to be in trouble. But you'll be able to notice this fairly quickly. Within two innings, you'll notice if he has his good stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you could work through that, and I'm sure Rob Thompson knows. I mean, he had a reliever up yesterday um, in the fifth inning with Ranger pitching. I'm like, Ranger looks pretty good. I'm wondering what Rob is seeing. Mm -hmm. And because I saw him get the pitcher up, I was over at the ballpark. And then all of a sudden, Rangers started losing the strike zone a little bit. Yeah. I, I, the Phillies are not – I don't necessarily think they were really equipped to go through this postseason this year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, pitching-wise, you look at the Astros, they're the only team the Phillies have faced that have four starting pitchers. Yeah. Mm. Think, think about it. The Braves didn't. Strider came in. He wasn't ready to go. Uh, the Padres certainly didn't. Clevenger went – zero innings in that game he started mm -hmm. it's it's just a weird situation this year in major league baseball i don't know whether it's because these teams didn't think they were going to get this far or or what but i mean i'm sure the phillies though will fix that in the offseason um but i mean right now 
it, right now, I, I know the term "all hands on deck." It, it is truly that for the Phillies these next two, day, two yeah, days. Yeah, when to go hey, home, Ricky, man? Yeah, Ricky, Ricky, stay with the pitching theme for just a moment yeah. because if that rumor out there is true that uh, McCullers was tipping his pitches, so to mm-hmm. speak. Now, uh, Pedro Martinez on the MLB Network came out and said after the game that you could tell when he would go high with his glove, it was going to be a breaking pitch. When his glove was lower, it was a fastball. And obviously, Bryce calling bone back told him something, and it just filtered throughout that dugout. But my question is, if they picked it up on that side, how is it that Dusty Baker, Houston pitching coach, their big price hitters, bullpen people didn't pick up on that as well? Maybe they're just not, I mean, this might sound stupid. Maybe they're not paying attention in that sense. I mean, maybe they're just fo- focused on every result that's happening and not exactly what he's doing in his wind up and mechanics. I did look at it. I mean, there was some, there was a little deviation with his leg and a little deviation with his, with his glove, like you said. But I mean, that's something that you can't really fix in game. Okay. I mean, it sounds weird, but it's something he's probably been doing for games and the Phillies, because if you notice, Bryce went up to Kev- K-Long first. Mm. And that tells me that K-Long might have said something like uh, a couple days earlier, like, hey, McCullers, keep an eye out for this, this and this. And, you know, maybe McCullers doesn't do it every time. But yesterday, you know, if it was a telltale sign, it, it certainly showed because mm. the Phillies walloped them pretty good. Yeah, and. Yeah. In in my eyes, when you're a breaking ball pitcher, if all those pitches aren't perfect and they know what's coming, you're in big, big trouble and you're in for a long night. I will say this much. When I was in double A, I'll never forget, I, for some reason we would play Canton, the Indians. And they had Manny Ramirez. They had all these boppers on that team at that time. And every time I would go and pitch against them, not that I would give up a lot of runs, but they'd get some hits off me. And back then I wasn't used to giving up anything. And – Finally, the last game of the season, one of their coaches, as we're walking off the field, stops me and said, you need to get a cover for your index finger. Mm -hmm. Because every time I would throw my curveball, my index finger would go up in the air. And I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. And a lot of teams didn't notice it. But they did. They noticed it. Some some teams just have a knack for finding out little things. Wow. That's interesting. That is crazy. But um, Baker versus Thompson, man. You would think that, you know, the seasoned veteran that Baker is, you know, you, he would have done more to help his pitchers out last night. But, I mean, this is like, you know, Townsend has complete control of his entire team. You know, what's the difference right now? Well, the difference is, number one, Rob Thompson took Joe Girardi's analytics and turned it into a baseball program. He didn't turn mm-hmm. it into a computer anymore. You this, go. If you think about it, what are the words you hear from the team? We're going out, we're having fun. We're playing the game. We're playing the game right. We trust Topper. All these, all these statements do not sound like they're coming off of off of a printing machine, mm-hmm. right? And so right. I look at it in a different way. I know for a fact that there were certain guys that were here, and and there's a couple are still here. So I'm not going to bring up names, but they have said that they were they were being fed information when they were, uh, you know, getting ready to go hit. You can't play like that. You can't play the game like that. Barrett, you know you played on a, on a, on a football field, and I know you're getting information from your, from your quarterback when you're, when you're sitting out there uh, or, you know, defensively they're, they're yelling out signals. But my whole thing is that's fine and dandy, but you have to do your homework before you get on the field. Absolutely. You got to know have a game plan yourself. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I think these guys were having trouble, uh, I, I guess – figuring out how to plan for their at-bats. And what was happening is that you're getting dished information as you're walking to the plate. And if something is different when you get up there, you're done. You know right. what it happened to? Scott Kingery, it definitely happened to. Oh, oh yeah. I'd say he was definitely one of those guys. And, and to me, I think Rob Thompson has simplified the game. And I know you just said, well, the veteran Dusty Baker and, and, and the new guy, Rob Thompson, Rob is not new. Rob probably knows more than – most managers in baseball, period. I mean, he's been around the game forever, and he's been on the bench forever. So when you're doing that, you're learning from a lot of different people. And quite frankly, as a bench coach, you're looking at guys and you're saying to yourself, how would I do things differently? Or would I do this the same? So he's been learning for years and years and years. I think he just changed culture. And this team is just going out and having fun playing baseball, which is something you don't – yeah, you see all the signage and the dances and stuff like that, but just 
being able to come to the ballpark every day, sometimes it gets grueling. I think he took that away. Then, Ricky, I'll ask you this, as I asked Mike Sealski a few moments ago. How is it a Rob Thompson slips through the cracks and only gets his first managerial chance by accident? And like I asked Mike, I said, I'm sure the Phillies will never admit this, but I'm sure they were thinking he's only a Band-Aid to hold this thing together until after the season so we can go out and possibly get a big-name manager. Well, I think he was getting pushed by Bryce Harper. To be completely honest with you, that's the wow. that's the word that I've heard is that Harper was like, you know, don't pass on on Thompson. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one mm-hmm. of those things where when you have players pushing for you, especially a player of that magnitude, Absolutely. there's a good chance you're getting in there. And and I think it was up to Rob once he got in there. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think it was up to him how he portrayed himself to the players, how he uh, directed this team after Girardi was gone. And I, I, he's done a great job. And it's, I, I mean, we might look at some of the moves and go, what the hell is he thinking here? And the next thing you know, it turns to gold. I mean, sometimes that's a that's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it could be a little flukish, but I think he has the complete attention span of the players. And to go in there and wonder why he didn't get a job earlier is beyond me. I mean, I know he spent a lot of years with the Yankees. Uh, he was with what well, Aaron, he was with Aaron Boone and he was with Joe Girardi at times. It, it's just, you know, they always look outward. Think about this for a second. Dusty Wathen. How, how, did, right. how has he not gotten a, a managerial job yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's Good always point. guys that Valid are kind point. of glossed over. Rick, let, stay on him for a minute with his managerial style. Like he's taken the very aggressive approach. Like I'm worried about this game. I'll figure out everything else afterwards. And it, it really has worked. And we've seen it with both certainly dusty so far in this one, you know, you want to go to, to Melvin in the, in the Padres, you could take it back to the brave series, whatever, but he, he has, I, I'd rather he be this way than sort of passive or I got to wait till the Girardi was big on, we got a long season, you know, but Thompson is like, get this one and figure everything else out. Is that him? Is that a mandate from Dombrowski and the organization? Oh, no, 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 no. That is 100% on him. This is not about Dombrowski. Dombrowski has come out and said that it's Rob's team. You know, once he – because I think Dombrowski is a firm believer in who he has managing the team, runs the team, which is part of the culture change Mm. here. If you think Gabe Kapler was running the team every day, no chance. No. I mean, it's just one of those things where you have to give somebody some authority. And once you gave Rob the authority, I think he immediately knew he had to change what was in that clubhouse and the feeling that was in that clubhouse. And let's face it, he did it rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And that that just goes to show that the talent was there. It just wasn't coming out with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And when he took over, mm-hmm. I think he just relaxed the guys. I think that was huge really because, good. you know, if you look at how he approached yesterday's game, I mean, to go from not playing on Tuesday to now playing on, on you know, I mean, not playing on Monday to playing on Tuesday, then that's a, then you turn around and you and you make some things happen, uh, you know, as far as, you know, pitching, you change it up, you know, Suarez goes out there instead of, you know, Syndergaard. I mean, all those things are, you know – kind of a feeling thing for him as opposed to analytics, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I think he, he goes with his gut. That's something you don't see in Major League Baseball a lot anymore, but he has he has good feelings about what's going to happen in certain types of situations. Um, you know, some of them backfire. He started Sosa last week. That kind of backfired on him a little bit. Sosa really didn't give you anything offensively, but and, and he made an error de- defensively that probably should have been caught by Hoskins, but – Nonetheless, I mean, he's still taking chances. He's still doing different things. Um, But he's put a trust in certain guys, and I'll bring up a Bryson Stott, Mm -hmm. a Garrett Stubbs when he does. I mean, Stubbs, he's probably done playing this year. But but for the most part, during the season, he's given these guys confidence. Think about Matt Veerling, perfect example. Comes up, starts opening day, doesn't get the job done, is sent down by Girardi. Uh, I know I know that's not all Girardi's doing, but mm-hmm. Girardi stopped playing him there too for a little while before he was sent down. And he goes down, does what he has to do, an injury or two occurs, and all of a sudden he's back up. But it's with it's with uh, uh, Topper. And mm-hmm. the one thing about Topper was, I'm going to play these guys. You know, you have to get these guys some experience throughout the year. And I think he's done a really nice job of that. Bryson Stott, same thing. I mean, he got sent down because he wasn't wasn't playing well early right. on. But when he came back, he plugged him into the lineup. I mean, go as far as Derek Hall. 
Derek Hall comes up and he puts him in the four hole. <laughs> right. <laughs> that major league baseball. That's fearless. Yeah. And he and he reacted fearless. in the right way. He started bombing home runs. Yeah, that's but that's what you have to do. You have to give these guys some kind of confidence. Yep. And that's what I think he really brings to the table is he is confident in his players and then he's going to put them in a good spot to succeed. And Ricky, even when things go bad, he kept putting them out there. How how big is that in terms of, especially as we got to late August, September, the Brewers creeping closer and, you know, mm-hmm. managers get jittery. All of a sudden, you start making mistakes, you're sitting on the bench. How big was that in terms, especially for these young guys, not have to worry about looking over their shoulders day in and day out? I, I think it gives you a little sense of security as a player. You feel as though if, uh, it's okay to make mistakes because that's what, let's face it, baseball, that's what baseball is. Yeah. I mean, you make yeah. mistakes all the time in baseball, and a lot, of, a lot of them are physical, but there are those mental ones. And usually when it's mental mistakes, that's telling somebody that you need a day or two off. Yeah. But, and, and I think he picks up on that also. And he gives them days off. Like, I, I think your starters need a day every, a day off every once in a while. And he was stuck with this Harper situation where he had to put him in DH, which wasn't the plan at all mm-hmm. uh, early on in the year. Now, all of a sudden, this come this becomes a big part of the plan. That, that, that? that had to be some kind of an issue for him trying to figure out when do I get certain days off. And then when Harper went on the IL, I think that eased his pain a little bit in a strange yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but I will say this much. I came up with Jim Fergosi, and my first year, if I had a bad outing, you could bet your ass I was in there the next night mm-hmm. just to get get that taste out of my mouth immediately. Wow. That's and that just, that just gave me confidence that he was going to use me all the time. I mean, that that's – and that's a good feeling as a, as a baseball player. Well, Rick, I wonder if – if Girardi's not still, not, they're not playing now, but if he was kept on, Gregorius is probably still the starting shortstop. You know, I don't think yeah. he would have trusted Bohm enough to play him at third. It would have been some some veteran they probably picked up somewhere. That's, I don't think, the, the trust of the young guys has been amazing. Yeah, I don't think they make the playoffs if he was yeah. here. I, I think they would have continued on that rocky road. Let's face it, when we saw Girardi in his press conferences, he looked checked out. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say that about somebody, but he looked like he had no interest in being there anymore. It was like almost sick of answering easy questions. They're like, I mean, in all honesty, the questions that were being asked of him earlier on in the year were not very hard questions to answer, and he didn't want to answer those. So, so uh, it was I'm a check out. Go ahead. All right, so Ricky, what are some of the little intricacies that you'll be watching closely for in the game tonight? Uh, I think Aaron Nola's pitch location early on in the ball game, especially his fastball location, is that sinker that that comes in off of the left-handed batter's box. If he's locating that, I think that's always a telltale sign that he's on top of the baseball and he's throwing the ball well. Right. Uh, the other thing is the depth on his curveball. I think that that'll be noticeable even on TV. You'll you'll get a good look at it. If it, if it's not not a twelve to six type curveball. Then, then you got to wonder: Is he a little bit tired? Is he is he getting under the baseball a little bit? Uh, it's just going to be. I think it's the same factor as as with a Wheeler. Is he a little fatigued right now? How closely do we have to watch that? And I mean, the ball being flat. I mean, I guess I could notice it on TV. I don't know if you guys could. could. I know you guys watch a lot of baseball, but mm-hmm. I, I you could see if there's no jump on the baseball, and the mm-hmm. hitters will let you. Hitters will let you know that pretty early on in the game. That's why I said. About about two innings in, you'll know exactly what you have in Aaron Nola, mm-hmm. and I don't I don't know. He's just one of those guys I feel like is due for a big game, and this is the needed one because this could be a pitcher's duel tonight. If Nola is on top of his game, I think this could definitely be a pitcher's duel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Javier, who's going for the Astros, has been dealing. Uh, that's for sure. Rick, one seventy batting average against for the year. Ugh, yeah, don't love that. Um, the bullpen, uh, you, you know your your area of expertise for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, these guys unheralded in a lot of ways you know we're, we're throwing praise at harper we're throwing praise at, at, at schwerber and everybody else rightfully so rob thompson quietly even even the you know kind of unheralded guys have all really stepped up here rick yeah it's been a little bit of everybody i mean when you when your bullpen has a zero era through uh three games of a world series you're doing something right yeah. i just think it's the snowball effect when one guy's going good you kind of thrive off of that and it becomes easier for everybody else i always said when i was closing in a bullpen that um if i had good uh setup guys in front of me it made my job a hundred times easier hmm. because momentum 
It's it's all about killing momentum. And if you have that one guy go in there with a runner on second base and one out and you get out of that inning with no runs, that's going to roll over because that the other team plays dead at that point. And then you could go out there and just pitch your game. Um, and, and even looking, I mean, look, Gibson and Bilotti, these guys have stepped up a little bit. Nelson yeah. has stepped up even yesterday. And uh, but that's what you hand. Well, hand hand hasn't really pitched that much, but no, but when he got in there, he pitched a shutout inning. He's I mean, a one, he's a one pitch pitcher. That's I great. know, I know, but I mean, you think about it though, because when they put him in the game Sunday, I'm thinking Houston's about to blow the doors off this game. He went in there and held his own against them. Yeah, he's been around long enough where you know what, you have a couple bad outings, he could fix himself, he could right the ship a little bit. And I know he, he came off of the IL too, so you got to wonder if he's 100% also, right? I think, I think a lot of these guys are running on fumes, but they're doing the, they're doing a nice job out there in the bullpen. And let's face it, the Astros bullpen was the one that was highly touted coming into this one, absolutely. And the Phillies have kind of you know what kicked dirt on their face. Yeah, hey, right. Rick, I, I gotta ask you this, Rick, because this has been a big topic we've talked about for the last couple of days. You you look at how they, they move Wheeler back in this rotation now, okay? And we know that he was dealing with the tendonitis, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a, when a series of this magnitude and your number one pitcher, it keeps sliding back. From your perspective, is there anything in your mind that says, I wonder if the tendonitis has resurfaced? They're giving him as many extra days as possible to, to let this thing heal up a little bit? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I know they keep saying it's fatigue, but fatigue is – Sometimes it's either a dead arm or it's like a tendonitis thing yeah. that could go away. I mean, maybe maybe they gave him some kind of a shot that we don't know about, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of days ago to see if he can't get through this. Um, but, yeah, there should be some concern. I mean, I think I, I think if you asked Rob one on one, Rob, what are you thinking? I hope yeah. he's probably going to tell you, I hope this gets over in five. True. Right. Well, well, let me ask you this then. You know, who has the most gas then? Eflin, Alvarado. Dominguez, you know, who has the most gas? You said these guys are running out of gas right now. Who would you trust? Well, I I, th I would say on one day, like if they're only going out there for one day, I think they're all pretty good. When you have to start going two, maybe three days in a row, that might, that might you'll see a lot of fatigued arms out there. Mm. But, I mean, the only thing you could do right now is go out there with the best of your ability and hopefully things go well. And, I mean, even Sir Anthony has shown some wear. I mean, he's coming off of elbow surgery. He hasn't pitched as much in years, so you expect that. I think the one guy who really hasn't shown much, but if you pitch him two, three days in a row, he shows it a little bit, is Alvarado. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's, this guy's filthy. Jeez, he filthy. Bad. He's a great transformation. Yeah, I mean, he goes down. He doesn't. He doesn't complain about it. He works on things, and he comes back up, and he's a different guy. I give him all the props in the world, man. He he handled it like a pro, and you know he's pay, it's paying the dividends for him. Yeah, he went down and he fixed himself, and he came up and he came back with a vengeance. I mean, yeah. that's something you'd love to see, and he's come back with a little moxie, to mm -hmm. say the least. Mm -hmm. I think he enjoys doing what he's doing right now, and understands that he's one of the best in the game. All right, Rick, last one from me. A, uh, does it get back to Houston? B, do they win it if it does get back to Houston? Obviously, it comes down to tonight. If they win tonight, I think it's over. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I I, just think Aaron Nola is going to pitch a good game. I, I think they finish it in five now. I did say Phillies in six to start, but I, I think if the offense comes out like they did last night, this is going to be ugly for Houston. Wow. All right. Good stuff. Rick, thanks, man. Thank we, you, Rick. Uh, Appreciate you, bro. Love up with you. Uh, awesome job on the pre and post game show with Michael B and the boys and on 97.5 The Fidelity. Hey, man, don't bother me today, man. Uh, did you see, Barry? <laughs> see? There he goes again, Ricky. This is no. what I'm talking about Hold right on. here. You guys want to say Rick, Rick is, is he, he's doing his show and he, he has a, a ball and he's throwing it. He's oh, throwing against, it at the wall. <laughs> against the glass. And I didn't know it made noise on the other side. <laughs> right. <laughs> So nobody yeah. wants to say anything. To Ricky, him. Ricky is fun in the in the newsroom. I will just yeah, say I that. try to be. Yes, Rick, we appreciate it. Don't ever, don't ever change, brother. Don't ever change. No, don't worry about that. He will not change. That's for sure. Uh, but, like hey, D exactly right. Uh, Verlander will get the start for Houston in Game Five. Uh -oh. So tomorrow it will be Verlander. Uh oh. We know how you know that, that first game he started off hot. And then second time around, they started getting to him. So we'll see what adjustment team makes. I tell him, you have three innings max to show me what you can do. And you may not have that because yeah. of your history in the World Series. I told you, I wouldn't start him, him again. I wouldn't, him. I wouldn't start him again if I was Houston. 
Yeah, you know, du- Dusty's, but Dusty's putting a lot of faith in him, man. Yeah, he is. Yes, he a lot is. Of faith. You know, huh? wouldn't you, even with that record, wouldn't no. you have a lot of faith? I would. No, because oh. I think their pitching staff is deep enough. You outside McCullers got lit up last night, but you know, again, you look at it, McCullers' overall numbers. He doesn't leave the yard that much. His balls don't leave the yard. They just got him last night. They got him last night. Yeah. You look at this Houston pitching staff, Barrett, they have four other options to put in there in their starting rotation. Mm-hmm. I would bring Verlander in as my first guy out of the bullpen for two innings. We, history has shown his first two innings, he's nasty. After that, you still have plenty of depth in that bullpen to go to. Yeah. yeah. I, would, be- I would not start him. It's going to be fascinating. It, it, it's a, definitely a move you're going to look at long and hard, man, if it doesn't work out for sure. All right, so we'll come back. We will set our sights on the Birds. Yes, they have a game tomorrow night, believe it or not, uh, in all the Philly hysteria. The Eagles do play tomorrow night, so we'll dive into the Eagles when we get back. Don't go anywhere. D-Gun, B. Brooks, R. Ellis. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about Pro Action Restoration. Pro Action Restoration is the place that you call or reach out to if your home, your business, or a property that you own has gone through or is, you know, in, in the midst of going through the inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage, whatever the case may be. Pro Action is on call 24 hours, seven days a week. I called them on a Saturday. They got right over. They fixed the problem. They cleaned it up. The crew was professional and the price was reasonable. Every box checked. They are licensed, bonded, fully insured. Pro Action Restoration has been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. Pro Action will work in conjunction also with your insurance company. So again, it could be fire, it could be water, it could be smoke, it could be mold remediation, any of the above. If you're not really sure, you're having an issue, you can call them and get a consultation. 610-623-3760, 610-623-3760, or online at proactionrestoration.com. That's proactionrestoration.com. Go to get 